Hi, my name is Jeff Godevich and I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Wilson Electronics. What I'd like to talk today about is a topic that's getting a lot of attention and one that we get asked quite frequently from our customers and our partners and, and that is the whole topic of 5G. What I'd like to do is talk a little bit about what is 5G, what we see as the path towards the implementation of 5G and, and then lastly but also most importantly is what does 5G mean to the future of Wilson Electronics uh, as well as our customers and partners. So what is 5G? 5G stands for fifth generation, and it's the next evolution in cellular network beyond today's 4G LTE. And in a lot of ways, it's, it's really a specification. And it's a specification that defines how the network will deliver to the demands and needs of a cellular network that's growing exponentially with connected devices, more people, the Internet of Things, machine to machine, and the higher data rates and data speeds needed for, for content delivery. The future 5G network will be able to support not just the increased demand for data, uh, speed for that data, as well as a greater number of connected things, and, and not just smartphones and people, but also in uh, machine to machine applications and for the Internet of Things, more connected devices. And what that will mean is a network that is capable of delivering up to a thousand times more data than what is supplied by today's current 4G LTE network. Uh, the data speeds and data rates for people to download applications will be improved by up to 100 times faster than what today's 4G LTE network will deliver. And then as I said, with the number of connected devices and things, it will have to support up to 100 times more connected devices and applications uh, than what today's 4G network will, will deliver. And then also, an important thing is in that connected devices and IoT world, extended battery life. A lot of remote applications will require uh, onboard battery power, and so uh, this network will be able to, to support up to 10 times the battery life for some of those low-power applications. And then lastly, for things like autonomous driving or um, low-latency real-time gaming and video, uh, the speed and the latency of the 5G network will be five times faster than what today's network uh, is. So while the excitement over 5G, I think one of the things is the promise of faster data rates is something that people can, can easily relate to. And, and the improvements in 5G over 4G, for example, can be illustrated by, say, downloading a two-hour movie. And if you look back at a 3G network, a two-hour movie, for example, would take you roughly 26 hours to download, which is incredibly long. Uh, the 4G network improved greatly over that, and the same two-hour movie would be able to be downloaded in about six minutes. But the promise of 5G uh, tomorrow's network, that same two-hour movie, you could download that in as little as 3.6 seconds, three and a half seconds. So if you can imagine as you're sitting on an airplane and the door's ready to close, you can download you know, several movies uh, to, to watch while you're, while you're on your flight. So how are operators and hardware manufacturers moving towards meeting the specifications of 5G? And, and really there are two paths that we see. One of them is, is using today's existing spectrum in, in sub-6 gigahertz, for example. And in longer term, they'll be developing new macro and new radio networks, uh, millimeter wave frequencies. Uh, but today, when you see a lot of advertisements about 5G um, trials or 5G deployments, and in a lot of ways what they're doing is, is two things. And, and one is they're aggregating existing spectrum. And, and to deliver the specification of 5G to, to do those faster data rates, for example, it requires more bandwidth. And what that means for Wilson is, is that actually our products are already capable of, of meeting things like carrier aggregation. And if you look at products of today, our five band products, for example, cover cellular bands 2, 4, 5, 12, and 13. And in aggregate, as our products do simultaneous coverage of all of those, that, for example, delivers up to roughly 157 megahertz of, of total downlink spectrum, for example. And so as carriers try to evolve into faster data rates, what, what allows them to do is they can aggregate frequencies uh, and combine those to provide more bandwidth to deliver faster content. And, and with Wilson Electronics products today, since we do cover all bands simultaneously, what that allows our products to do are adapt to field trials and things or areas where carriers are aggregating spectrum. So to deliver the full promise of 5G to the full specification, what hardware manufacturers and operators are doing are developing what's called 5G NR. And what that stands for is 5G New Radio. And, and what it is is an entirely new macro base station network that's uh, based on millimeter wave frequencies. 
And what we've done in the U.S., the FCC has opened up frequencies in uh, the 28 gigahertz band as well as 37 gigahertz. And what that does is it allows a greater use or a greater amount of, of spectrum. As I said earlier, if you took the existing five bands in our products today, for example, and, and you combined and added up all the available downlink frequencies across all of those carriers, it, it equates to about 157 megahertz of spectrum. And, and what these new millimeter wave frequencies do is it gives operators um, 24 times the amount of spectrum. And so what they can do is then create channel bandwidths of 100 megahertz in order to deliver that, that speed and that, that data rate. So another aspect of, of 5G that has greatly improved over today's 4G LTE network is in the increased speed or what they call a reduction in latency. And, and a lot of people probably don't relate to that specifically, but what it means is the amount of time it takes a, a cellular signal to travel from a base station to a device or a user smartphone and then back to that base station again. So it's the full turnaround time. And a way to maybe illustrate that is, is what that relates to is say in, in the connected car or the autonomous driving world, which if a vehicle was completely connected through a cellular network uh, and you're traveling say for example at 65 miles per hour down a highway, well the amount of time that it would take a 4G signal uh, that has a 50 millisecond latency specification. The amount of time it takes for that signal to get to you and then back to the base station, your car or your vehicle would already have traveled five feet. Um, and that may seem like a fair amount, especially when vehicles are talking to each other, but under a 5G network, uh, the latency is, uh, is reduced to a millisecond. And so under that same scenario at 65 miles per hour, for example, instead of traveling five feet, that reduction in turnaround time, your vehicle will only travel an inch. And so it's, it's, you can see how it's substantially faster and what that relates to it. And it's not just for autonomous vehicles, but in uh, connected things and machines, for example, you have factories with you know, high RPM uh, conveyors and machines and things. And so that latency is going to be able to control those machines at a, at a much better rate. Um, for video, for example, if streaming 4K video, a lot of times you'll see maybe pixelation or your screen gets granular as you're watching a sporting event, for example. And, and with the reduction in, in, in latency time, what that's gonna mean is a better video quality, uh, better reaction time if you're gaming online and, and applications that are going to require, say, augmented reality or virtual reality. All those things will be enhanced by the, uh, the ability for networks to operate at a, at a much faster speed. So as 5G new radio or a network uh, based on millimeter wave frequencies begins to, to become built out, you know, what we see or what we get asked a lot is, you know, what does this mean for the, for the future of Wilson Electronics as, as well as today's existing products? And, and really what we see is, is that our need will only be you know, there even greater. And, and, and what I mean by that is if you, know, if you look at what today's issues are, is you know, we provide in-building coverage, for example, to overcome you know, path loss and, and signals that fade and attenuate as they say go through trees or travel a long distance or even more so go through steel and concrete and, and, and insulated windows in a, in a commercial building, for example. And with, as frequencies translate or, or move to millimeter wave, that, that attenuation or signal loss has only become more pronounced. And so we see the need of in-building wireless solutions for 5G even greater than, than what exists today. And maybe a way to illustrate that also would be to, to show the, the amount of attenuation uh, under two conditions. And so if you look at a two gigahertz signal today um, over say, you know, maybe uh, a few hundred meters and going through buildings, that, that signal will generally attenuate about 50 dB. And so that usually causes the need for an in-building solution to, to enhance the signal. Uh, well, if you look at that same distance, uh, a millimeter wave frequency would attenuate uh, up to 130 dB of, of, of signal or signal loss. And so you can see there's a, an even greater amount of attenuation or signal loss once frequencies start to translate to, uh, to millimeter wave. And so Wilson Electronics is, is looking forward and developing products to, to support 5G new radio standards as they, as they evolve. And we'll, we see the future for, for us just uh, being requiring even, even more indoor solutions. So we also get asked, obviously, you know, when is all of this going to take place and, and what's the timeline for, for implementation of, of 5G? And, and as I said, there, there really are two paths. Uh, a lot of trials and things you'll see today is, is enhancements to the 4G LTE network things like carrier aggregation, uh, massive MIMO is another thing you might read about, and, and all those things really enhance a 4G network into, into faster data rates and speeds than, than what they do today. But in the longer term, the, the true 5G new radio using millimeter wave frequencies is going to take quite a bit longer. And 
the specifications even to be fully drafted and, and adopted is, is still going to be about a year away. And, and then beyond that, hardware development is still something that looks like would be implemented somewhere in the, in the year 2020, for example. Um, and even then, uh, the, the initial millimeter wave network for 5G will be more of a, we see it as a, a fixed wireless access. So not a completely mobile network, but one where they're delivering 5G services to say fixed, uh, fixed buildings or, or fixed access, as I said. And so what we'll see is continue to work to develop you know, 5G solutions for that fixed wireless access um, types of applications. I hope this video was informative. For more information on Wilson Pro, please click the link in the description. And as always, you can subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.